Now, this is the scandal still dominating the headlines, and rightly so, after the new ITV drama, Mr Bates versus the Post Office. It shone a light on the terrible miscarriage of justice in which dozens of innocent sub-postmasters were wrongfully convicted. And, and they lost absolutely everything, and it's been a horrendous jo yeah. journey for them all. It really has. Yeah, yesterday we sat down with Alan Bates, and a, form a former sub-postmaster, and inspiration behind the series. Today, we're joined by another real person whose shocking story was told in the drama. Uh, jo Hamilton, alongside the star who played her, Monica Dolan, good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Um, and thank you for joining us on the sofa and telling your story, Joe. And Monica, can I just say, you have done such a fabulous job at portraying this story. It was uh, so emotional to watch. You you really took Joe's character and, and yeah, I was so emotional watching thank it. You. I don't think I've cried so much at a series. But, um, Joe, for people that have not watched the, the four-part drama, can you just um, tell us how it all started? So you decided to buy the post office in your local village. Is... Yeah, yeah, I bought the village shop and post office. And uh, I took out, well, I took a long lease on it. And um, I planned it to be my retirement business. And I took over running the post... I ran the post, post office as an... Uh, um, as a counter assistant first, because the postmaster was in name only, and then he was terminally ill, and so they asked me if I'd take over um, being sub postmaster. Um, just after I took over, they it went electronic, and having I went from having never had a problem to it just going well. As you see on the screen, Monica's done a great job. Um, ex exactly what happened, happened. <laughs> so it's not like you just took over and things went wrong. You know, you'd worked there for... I'd worked there for, well, 18 months. Yeah. Um, Paper-based, never had a problem. And once it went electronic, I lost control of it. But I thought it was something I was doing. I, because they told me I was the only one, I believed it was my fault. And th this is the base of the story. Everything seemingly going fine. They want to modernise the system. Fujitsu develop a system called Horizon. You all have to put it in the post office. You have no choice, do you? Yeah, You're no. Put it in, OK? <laughs> yeah, this... And they're saying, trust this system. When did you start not trusting it? When were the, the first red flags and what were they? Well, the, the first red flag was in the drama where, where um, Monica, um, she taps the screen. I was £2,000 down, so I rang them and literally it doubled in front of my eyes. And then they said, well, you've got to pay that. And so I demanded the area manager came down, he came down, couldn't find it. And um, they said, well, you've got to pay it. Your contract says you've got to pay it, so. And this, sorry, this is you totting up at the end of the day or the end of the week doing your books? At the, I was at the end of the weekly balance, yeah, where, you, where, you, where it sorted it all out for you and it would come up with a figure that you should have. And Describe that feeling, it's a lot of money. What, what, what was that like, that moment? Well, I didn't have, I didn't have 2,000, let alone 4,000, um, and it doubled to four, and I said, well, I don't have it. And they say, well, you have to um, uh, write out a hardship case, um, and they deducted it from my wages then, <gasps> until it was paid off. They yeah. deducted it from your wage? I mean, we, I, I don't know if you've ever had a final reminder, you know <laughs> the panic starts setting in. Yeah. So when, how much did they say you actually owed in the end before well, I you had, had to, to go to court? Oh, in, in the end, I, I let the amount climb because I was paying back three lots of money. Then I put remortgaged and put nine grand in because all this time, I know it sounds daft, but we're going back 20 years. Yeah. And I believed what was on the screen was right and I must have been pressing the wrong buttons. So I put nine grand in the safe by a remortgage and then when it kept going wrong, by then I dug myself in a hole and I just let it climb. Um, and you're keeping this to yourself? Yeah, this I didn't bridge. tell... Well, I obviously had to tell my mum and dad and my husband when we remortgaged, but when it went from, like, 9 to 36, I just kept quiet um, because I, I knew... I, I, well, I didn't know how to get out of the mess I was in. And you're trusting the system. I mean, Tony Blair signed off this system for £1 billion. There were warnings. Harriet Harman warned that there were flaws in the system in the early days of it. But, Monica, I'm just wondering, you know, when you see someone trusting a system and then they doubt themselves, yeah. you know, which is, I guess, something you had to convey in the way you played the part. Uh, you can understand how that can happen. Yeah, I, th I think it's quite relatable because I think everyone in some small way has had that experience of ringing a helpline or some, you know, something going on wrong with a computer. But, I mean, what's so, what shocked me so much was, first of all, the contract where the sub-postmasters um, are contracted to pay back this money if it doesn't balance. Um, also that the, the post office could conduct its own criminal investigations. 
So it's basically, I'm saying to you, you've stolen money off me, I'm going to investigate it, and, um, oh, I found out that you have stolen it, so I want it back, please. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's that, that was, I found really shocking. They are that... calling for that to change, aren't they? That's one. Yeah, and I, 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 I agree with Keir Starmer. I think that definitely should change, yeah. Uh, and the thing is, you should have never, ever been in court in the first place. There no. was... There was... No, when, when we did the uh, mediation scheme and the document came to light um, that said there was no evidence of theft or deliberate cash inflated figures, um, but... it's like... What? <laughs> I'll tell you what was beautiful to watch, and it's when everybody in the village came to the court to support you. Yeah. And even your local vicar came. Yeah, and she did, she did actually stand up, like, like in the drama, um, except there were 74 people from the village. Wow. It was, it was a, the most mad day ever. I mean, I can laugh about it now, but on the day, yeah. um, it was just crazy. Because it, it sounds so idyllic, opening up a post office in your local village <laughs> yeah. and your neighbours coming in every day and for it to crumble like that. And you were doubting yourself, I guess. There, yeah. was, a, there was embarrassment on your Well, I, I thought well. people might think I'd stolen money, you know? Or, yeah, you know. I, I mean, I remember when we met at the read-through and I, I, I think you nearly didn't get any lunch because I was just hounding you for information, but... Um, I really remember asking you, what, so what was it that stopped you for so long not telling anyone and not telling your family until you remortgaged and just you saying in quite a small voice, well, I thought it was me and I was... Yeah. And uh, that gave a key to so much of, of how to play it. Now, you've both spent a lot of time together. I know, I know you've followed um, <laughs> Joe's story. Um, uh, how angry are you both at, at Paula Venos? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd really like to find out who decided to give her a CB in 2019 because they knew at that point, they knew very well um, that there was this huge problem. So, I don't know, did somebody decide to give it to her in order to dishearten the post, sub-postmasters further? Um, it seems an extraordinary decision to me. I sure. can't imagine what, what, what would have been going through your mind well, when you were awarded her CBA. I don't know how, why she accepted it in the first place. Yeah. I mean, she must have known by then she'd left. She left part of the way through the, the um, last trial. And, you know, she must have known what she was doing. I, I, don't, I just don't understand it. And um, ju just very quickly before we go, uh, and, and we must respect the role that Alan and Suzanne played in this story going on, but the role of the drama, and it's kind of, it's great, but it's also kind of terrifying that without it, maybe, yeah. maybe the government wouldn't be kind of embarrassed into doing something about it, fast-tracking justice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they push out all these statements and everything. They mm. make it look like they're, they're paying everybody, but trust me, they're not. They're not paying the group that took them on in the High Court and... That's not right. Drama's been powerful, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think the thing is with... It, it, it's, it's, you know, valuable, hopefully, in the way that journalism can be, because it's just gone on, obviously, so wrongly for so long, the situation, and the news about it comes out in the order that it has to, and sometimes in dribs and drabs. And in this way, you know, Gwyneth's been able to sort of give something whole to show people and say this is what's happened over a, over a long period of time. And luckily, people are good and that's made people angry. Monica, um, thank you for telling yeah. the story. And Joe, thank you for allowing Monica to do something. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank, thank, you. thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank oh, you. my word. You're yeah. so invested in this. You've been watching it on ITVX, haven't you? It's so emotional, you? what you've all been through. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. so sorry that it's happened to you. just got to keep fighting. Yeah. Fighting for the group. Yeah, well done, you and, and Monica. Fabulous. Brilliant. Thank well you. Done.